All right, thank you. Please be seated. Good morning to the jury. We're prepared to proceed with the presentation of evidence from, from Anissa Wire. So, Attorney Swift, do you have further witnesses to call? Yes, we're going to call Detective Shelley Fisher. And just before um, I go out to get her, I wanted to confirm something. I think she's coming in. Okay. While she's going up to the stand, Judge, I want to make sure that when we're referring to the victim, we use the required manner in which the court wants us to do that. Should we use the initials PL or are we free to use the first name? I think the first name is fine. Okay. Then, uh, Detective, could you stand uh, and raise your right hand? Clerk will swear you in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you back. Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Then pull up to the microphone and state your <laughs> full name and spell your last name. Shelly Fisher. It's S-H-E-L-L-Y-F-I-S-H-E-R. All right, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. See the witness. Attorney Smith. Yeah, sure. okay. Detective Fisher, can you tell me how you're employed? I am a detective with City of Waukesha Police Department. And how long have you been a detective? About 13 years. How long have you been employed with the police department? I'm on my 24th year at City of Waukesha. Okay, and were you employed and working on May 31st of 2014? Yes, I was employed there. I don't believe I worked on the 31st. Okay, were you called into work for some reason on that day? No. Okay, did you become involved in the investigation of that stabbing that took place on May 31st, 2014? Yes. When did you become involved? Uh, I was involved a couple days later when I interviewed, um, I'm sorry, can I say the name? Oh, the judges allowed us to say the first name. Okay, uh, I interviewed Peyton. Okay, and before you interviewed her, did you do any other, were you involved in any other way in the investigation? No. Okay. You, um, if this, would this rec refresh your recollection, did you interview her on June 6, 2014? Yes. Okay. And you were assigned, were you assigned to do a forensic interview with her? Yes. And are you trained and certified to do interviews of children? Yes, I am. Well, and what type of training is involved in that? Uh, it's two classes that you go through. I went through the first class in 2006, and I was certified in 2009. Okay. Let me ask you this. As a part of that training, are you trained to do, I guess, what's called open-ended questions? Yeah, at that time we were using the stepwise interview system. Okay. And can you describe what that means a bit? Uh, it's a system used to uh, elicit the story from the child, so you're not using direct questions or leading questions. Okay, because you want to hear what happened from the point of view of the child that you're talking to, correct? Yes. And I think that technique was developed because children are kind of susceptible of being, I guess, influenced by questions that you might ask if they're kind of like leading questions. Sure. Okay. You um, was a, had a chance to review your Maybe a hearing problem. Oh. All right. Excuse me. All right. Very good. The courts are equipped with fairly modern evidence presentation equipment, and part of it is when we have someone that has any hearing impairment, we can give them wireless headphones to wear, and uh, generally if they're all working right, it helps the person hearing. So that's true for members of the jury, and it's also true for anyone in the gallery. If anyone has any hearing impairments and you believe you need those headphones, let one of the bailiffs know. Ma'am, how's it working? All right, thank you. And ma'am, thanks for bringing that to our attention. Do you have a good recollection of the interview that you had with Peyton on June 6, 2014? Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about what she told you happened on May 30th, 2014. Did she tell you about a sleepover at Morgan's house? Yes, she did. 
Okay, did she tell you about what happened the morning of May 31st, 2014? Yes. And did she tell you about going to like a park near her Morgan's home on that day? Yes. Um, did she tell you how she got to the park? They walked. Okay. Did she tell you anything about like, who may have suggested that they go over to the park? Uh, she said it was Morgan's idea. And did she tell you about going into any type of building while they were in the park? Yes, a bathroom. Okay. And did she tell you about going into any like stall in that bathroom? Yes. And did she tell you about why she went into the stall? Uh, she was asked to go into the stall by Morgan. Morgan said that she wanted to show her and Anissa some uh, vandalism that was inside a uh, toilet bowl. And did she tell you um, what happened while she was in that bathroom stall? So the three of them went into this stall and once the three of them entered the stall, Morgan locked the stall and said that she had lied that there really wasn't any vandalism in the toilet bowl. Okay. And did she tell you anything about being in like a corner of that bathroom stall? She told Peyton that she needed to sit in the corner of the stall up against the wall. Okay. And what happened after she, did she tell you what happened after she moved over to the corner of the stall? Uh, she was told that she needed to go to sleep. Okay. Did she say anything about someone locking the bathroom stall? Yes, Morgan did lock the bathroom stall. Okay. And did she say anything about being grabbed while she was in there? Yes. Um, Morgan had first grabbed her arms and put them behind her back and just held them there. And then Anissa stood in front of her and kind of just stared at her. Okay. Um, did she say anything about what happened after, after that, after Morgan grabbed her arms? Uh, Morgan said to Anissa, I thought we agreed that you were going to do this. And I believe you said that Anissa was standing in front of Peyton at the time that Morgan said that? Yes. Did she tell you what happened if Morgan did anything after that? Uh, she said that she needed to talk to Anissa in the next stall over. Okay. Did she say anything else about what happened after Anissa and Morgan talked in the stall next to her? Uh, they came back in the same stall that Peyton was in, and then this time Anissa held Peyton's arms behind her back, and then Morgan stood in front of her and uh, stared at her. While um, Anissa was sitting next to her, did Anissa do something to her? Did she say that? Yes. And what did she say Anissa did? She said that she hit her to the front of her head very hard, which caused the back of her head to hit against the wall. Okay. And did they actually stab her in that bathroom stall? No. Okay. What happened? Uh, Peyton said that she was not going to go to sleep and... Uh, Morgan said, why don't you just go out and play? So Peyton went out on the playground equipment to play. Okay. So they eventually left that bathroom and went back outside, correct? Yes. And did they at any point, or did she tell you at any point, what happened after they were all three out of that, that bathroom building? After they were all out of the bathroom, they were back on the playground equipment for a short time, and then it was suggested that they go for a walk. Okay. And did they go to the woods at any point? Yes. Then they took a walk over to a wooded area next to the park. Okay. And while they were there, did they play any games? Did she say whether or not they played any games? Hide and seek. Okay. And did she tell you... Like who suggested playing hide and seek? She said Anissa did. Okay. And 
did she say to you whether or not something bad happened to her while they were playing hide and seek? Yes. And what did she say happened? She said that Morgan had stabbed her. Did she say whether or not um, Morgan said anything to her before doing it? Yes. And what did, Mor what did Peyton say Morgan said before doing it? Morgan had approached her. Um, Peyton was lying on her back. So Morgan sat on her legs and then she got real close to her and she said, I'm sorry. And then she started stabbing her. Okay, so before she started um, stabbing her, she said, um, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I believe she said, I'm so sorry. Did she say whether Morgan said anything to her after doing it? Yes. And what did she say that Morgan said? Morgan said that she had to do this in order to save her life. Okay. And did Morgan eventually start talking to you about, about the creepy pastas? Peyton? Excuse me, yes, Peyton, I'm sorry. Yes, she did. And what did she say about Morgan's involvement in the Creepypasta website? Uh, she said that Morgan was extremely obsessed <clears throat> with Creepypasta. And did she say about when she thought Morgan became obsessed with the Creepypasta? In, she estimated in January or February of 2014. And this, is this her exact word? She said that Morgan began getting obsessed with creepypasta. Is that exactly what she said? Yes. Okay. Did she say anything about how Morgan, uh, if Morgan changed in any way after she became obsessed with creepypasta? Yes, she said she became scarier and scarier and weirder and weirder. Did she say anything about whether or not Morgan ever shared any of her, the things that she discovered in terms of creepypasta pictures or, or links with her? Yes. And what did she say was um, shared with her? Uh, she said that Morgan would repeatedly email her pictures of creepypasta characters. Uh, there was one in particular that she said um, Morgan knew that Peyton didn't like this character and so she was purposely emailing this uh, photo of this character to her in order to scare her. Okay. So Peyton didn't like the creepypasta pictures? No. Does she make any additional comments about the extent of Morgan's interest in creepypasta? Uh, that she was doing a lot of research on it, that Morgan wanted to uh, prove that uh, it was real. And did she say that Morgan was obsessed with everything to do with creepypasta? Yes. Did she say that Morgan discussed it at lunch? Yes. Did there come a point where Morgan shared with Peyton proof that creepypasta was real? I don't know that there was actual proof that she showed her, but she was trying to prove to her that it was real. Okay. Did she, um, did Peyton say that Morgan tried to prove to her that it was real by printing out newspaper articles and pictures to prove that the creepypasta characters were real? Yes. How did Peyton react to what the proof that Morgan was sending her? Uh, she was very scared by it. Um, she was told by Morgan that this character would come into her room at night and kill her. So she locked her windows. She had the curtain down. Um, she would face away from the window when she was sleeping. She would have her door locked. Uh, she also uh, went to her mom and told her mom what was happening and she was wondering if her mom knew if this was real or not. Did she and her mother eventually do their own research to see if um, any of the characters were real? Yes. And is that what um, Peyton told you? Yes. 
And after they did their research, did Peyton indicate whether or not she was still convinced that the characters were not real? Uh, she said her mom said she could not find any evidence that this was real, but she still uh, felt that she wondered why Morgan would say this, that she kind of wanted to believe what Morgan was saying. So Peyton herself was still not convinced that it was not real? Yes. Um, did Peyton talk about Anissa? Yes. Did she say whether or not Anissa was into the creepy pastas? She said she was. And did she say anything about how Anissa uh, behaved when she was around Morgan? Uh, she said that Anissa was different when she was around Morgan. So how does she describe what Anissa's like when she's around Morgan? Uh, she said that Anissa was rude, that she would uh, say bad words, and that she would hit people. But how did she describe Anissa when Anissa was not around Morgan? Oh, said Anissa was much nicer, a lot easier to be around. Um, she had started to apologize for hitting Peyton and um, saying mean things to her. Um, you, in addition to interviewing Peyton, I believe you were given some other assignments as a part of the investigation, correct? Yes. Did you at any point have contact with the, the school that Anissa and Morgan attended? Yes. And how did you make arrangements to go to the school? Actually, the administration from the school contacted me to come over to the school. Okay, and they wanted you to come over to the school because they were preparing to do what? Uh, they were going to go through the lockers of uh, the three students. Okay, and were you able to actually go there and be there while they were going through the lockers? Yes. And when you went there to go through the lockers with them, what, what was your plan? What was your purpose in doing that? Uh, just to see if there was anything in the lockers that would be related to uh, the stabbing incident. Okay, so when you went to the locker and you looked through Anissa's locker and you then looked through Morgan's locker, your purpose was not to grab everything in that locker, right? Correct. Your purpose was to grab only those items that you thought had some significance to um, the stabbing and the creepy pasta characters, correct? Yes. Object that it's leading, John. Okay. So, wait just a minute. Well, it is leading, but under the, based upon the nature of this uh, testimony, the question and answering, I'll overrule the objection. But I'll just counsel, caution counsel on leading. Okay. So, were you able to do an inventory of items found in a locker that you thought were relevant to the investigation? Yes. And did you do, like, I guess what's called proper to property inventories of the things that you thought were relevant? Yes. Please tell me we're not going through. Is that previously marked? It is. I'm grabbing exhibit G. All right. And Judge, can I approach the witness? You may. I'm going to show you an exhibit that's marked Exhibit G. Do you, do you recognize that? Yes. It also has on the front property inventory, I believe it's 56. Yes. And are you the person that put that property inventory sticker and number on there? I would have created this sticker, yes. Okay. And I want you to look through what's been marked ex as Exhibit G um, really quickly. Look through all of the pages that are there. Okay. And let's first, I want to start off by asking you if you, you recognize the pages that are Exhibit G 
Yes. Okay. And are those items that you recovered during a part of the locker search just that you did at the school? Yes. Okay. The pages that you see there, do you know where they came from? Uh, this was a notebook that says notebook containing drawing located in Nissa Wire School locker. Okay. And what you have there, that is, does that represent all of the pages that were in that notebook? I believe so. Were there, let me ask you this, were there some pages in that notebook that were blank? Yes. Okay. So this is not everything that was included in that notebook, right? I don't know because there are some, there's a blank page that's included in okay. here. But you do know that this is a notebook that you recovered out of um, Anissa's locker? Yes. Okay. And you, when you went to the school, were you provided information about the circumstances of the stabbing on May 31st? Yes. And were you aware that there was information about either Slender Man or Creepy Poster having some significance? Yes. Okay, so when you look through Anissa's locker, you were you looking for items that may have some sort of reference to Sleepy Sleepy Poster? Creepy Poster. Creepy yes. Poster, excuse me. <laughs> were you? Yes. Okay. And I, I want to if you don't mind, I want to grab Exhibit G back from you. I'm going to put a few pages up on the document scanner or document viewer. First page I want you to look at is a page that has the words always watches on it. You included that as a part of your property inventory. In your mind when you did that, did that phrase have some significance to you? I felt that it did. And did it have some significance because of its relationship to um, Slenderman? Yes. And what is it about this phrase that made you think it has some reference to the Slenderman character? I saw it repeatedly in other areas, so I thought it was related. Um, I'm aware that Slenderman is uh, supposed to not have any eyes. But is it also a part of that Slenderman idea that he sees everyone, sees everything? Yes. I'll show you also what appears to be a drawing of a person with no face. Is this something that you also thought has some significance to the Slenderman character? Yes, I did. And, and why is that? Because uh, it looks to be like a figure without a face. And that's what Slenderman is described as? Yes. Objection leading. Okay. So let me ask this. Is that what Slenderman is described as? Yes. I'll also show you this. You, um, you also copied an inventory, I should say inventory this. Um, why did you inventory this? Uh, to me it looks like a person that has blood on their torso. And the items that you just went over, these are things that were found in Anissa's locker in her Spanish notebook? Yes. Detective, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit H. Have you had a chance to look at it all? Yes. Okay. And were you, you were there when these documents were recovered from one of the lockers at the school? Yes. Right. And whose locker were, were these items recovered from? Morgan's. Okay. And this is items that were 
found and, and what? In a notebook. Okay. And after you found these in her locker, did you property inventory this notebook as well? Yes. Okay, and it looks like, again, this is a science notebook? Yes. And you property inventory this item. Is it because you thought that there were items in here that were references to Slenderman? Yes. I want to go through a few of the pages in that exhibit with you as well. This first page I'm going to show you, it said, oops. at the top it said, says defenses slender. And did you believe that was relevant, of course, because it has the name slender at the top? Yes. And what did you think when you saw this that the writings meant? Um, obviously something about Slenderman. It talks about Slenderman in the next sentence and um, some of the characters involved with uh, Slender Man and Creepy Pasta. Okay. And did the f phrase defenses take on any meaning to you um, when you were considering its reference to relationship to Slender Man characters? Uh, I understand it's from defenses uh, for Slender Man. So, where it says masky and hoodie all for cheesecake. What did you think that meant in relationship to defenses for slenders? Uh, that you're supposed to give that to the character Masky and Hoodie. And for Slender Man up at, up at the top, it says, run like hell. What do you think that that meant the relationship to defenses against Slender Man? I'm guessing that if you see him, you should run away. So this appears to be a list of things to do to protect yourself if you come into contact with these creepypasta characters. Yes. This next page at the top it says supplies necessary. Yes. And. Um, did that take on any type of significance in terms of your investigation into this case? Yes, I was aware that uh, Morgan and Anissa were planning to go to a forest and because it says map of forest and supplies necessary, um, I believe that this was related to their um, intent of going to this forest. Okay, and I think one of the um, notations on here relates back to the exhibit that we just looked at earlier. It says, cheesecake masky hoodie. Yes. Right? So that's in reference to the defense against those two creepypasta characters. Yes. Show you this document it says he still and at the bottom sees you with a circle and two X's what why was that significant in terms of your belief that it had a connection to the to Slender Man I believe that it may be related to Slender Man as it appears to be a face with the X's as being eyes in the character does not supposed to have eyes okay and it also says that he you know still is able to see even though he, ha he doesn't have eyes correct correct and that's something that slender man's able to do even though he doesn't have eyes correct that would be my understanding and this one says never at the top alone and then in the middle there's a circle with an X. Did that, does that circle with an X have any reference to Slender Man? I'm not sure if it does or not. Um, 
Again, it has that same X, so I don't know if that represents an, an I or something of that nature with and Slender Man. In your it's research into the Slender Man, is this a symbol that you see a lot in relationship to the Slender Man character? Yes. This document here it says he cannot be harmed, and at the bottom again there's those circles with the X, correct? Correct. And again, you found through your research into Slenderman that the circle and the X it has some significance to the Slenderman character. Yes. This document here says no more secrets, and then at the bottom, there's this, uh, for better words, kind of like stick figure with lines going, three lines going, extending from the mm -hmm. body out to the side. Yes. And that stick figure, did that have any sort of significance to you? To me, I thought it represented a Slender Man because, again, you have the um, outline of a body, there's no face, and then um, apparently Slender Man sometimes may have like tentacles that come out from his back, and um, that could be interpreted from the drawing. This document here said he never comes, and it has that circle and the X. Yes. And that, again, has some significance in relationship to the Slender Man character. Yes. This document here has the word safe at the top. And then underneath, there appears to be what looks like a tower. Is that what it is? I think it could be interpreted as a tower. And, and do your research into the Slender Man character, did a tower begin to have some sort of significance to Slender Man? It was my understanding that Morgan and Nyssa were going to these woods to uh, where they expected to find a tower. Okay, and the tower, did it have any sort of significance as a place? to go if you encounter Slender Man? Yes. And was it considered something of a safe place? I believe so. And then that's why the word safe is written probably right above this tower. Objection. It calls for speculation, Judge. He sustained. Detective Fisher, I want to show you what's been marked as Exhibit A. Give a second, take a look at Exhibit K. So, Detective, is um, Exhibit K something that you found in one of the lockers at the school? Yes, in Morgan's locker. Okay, and Exhibit K is an item that you property inventoried as, as what number again? 66. Okay, and again, your reason for collecting those documents is because, is it because you thought that they had some reference to the Slender Man character? Yes. Okay. And I just want to show you a few other documents that included in that exhibit. So this first picture is a picture of a person with a face, no eyes. And why did you think that has some significance to the Creepy pasta website. Again, just with the character of Slender Man not having a face or eyes. Next thing I want to show you is um, looks like a writing of some sort. And at the top, there's a reference to Jeffrey Woods. Yes. And why did you think that has some significance to the Creepypasta website?
I'm not sure with this. Um, it looks like a story. Is there a character in the creepy pasta website named Jeff the Killer? Yes. Okay. And does that name is that name in any way connected to Jeff the Killer? You know, I can't really read a lot of the, the writing in here, but on this, the top of this page, it says Jeffrey Woods. This document here, it has some writing in the, kind of like near the center that says, you are a strange, you are a strange child. It will be of my use. And then there's this figure in the bottom <coughs> corner. Did this have some significance to Slender Man for you? I think that could be interpreted as um, a character related to Slender Man, again, with the tentacles that appear to be coming out from the back. Okay. And it looks like just to the left of that, is a circle with an X as well. Yes. And that's also commonly found in relationship to the Slenderman character? Yes. And this says Slender Parodies. So it's, in your view, <coughs> since it's titled Slender Parodies, did you think it has some relationship to the Slender Man character? Yes. <clears throat> this document here, it looks to be a drawing of a person, a face, no eyes, no nose, no mouth, and then some tendrils or tentacles coming out from the body. Did that drawing have some significance in relationship to the Slender Man character for you? Yes, again, just because of the tentacles coming out of the back. This document here, again, it has the it has the word safe on it, and there's a drawing that looks like a, a tower. Did that have some significance for you in terms of its relationship to the Slender Man character? I'll object to it, because we've asked these questions about a picture that's almost identical to that. I'll overrule it's a different picture, even though I, I agree with your analysis of it. You, you, I'll overrule the objection. Uh, yes, it looks like uh, previous pictures that it could be interpreted as a tower and the word safe on there. Okay. And this picture here has that circle, X, can't run. That's seen a lot in reference to the Slender Man character? Yes. And this picture here, as always, watches, no eyes, face, two X's for eyes. That's something that you believe has a reference to the Slender Man character? Yes. This picture here, it has can at the top, run at the bottom, has a circle in the center with an X in that circle. And then it has what looks like a figure that appears to be Slender Man. has a tower in the right corner with safe. And then it has what looks like to be trees. And that <coughs> drawing, did it, in your opinion, have a reference to the Slender Man character? Yes. Because all of those things are what we've gone over in previous documents all together on one document, right? Yes. Okay. Detective, I'm going to show you, it's marked as exhibit I. 
give you a chance to review that. And um, is, are, is that uh, items that you would cover from one of the lockers at the school? Yes, from Morgan's. Okay, I want to show you some of the pages quickly that are <coughs> in exhibit I. First one I'm going to show you at the top of it, it says IR 14 27629. Excuse me. IR 14 2769, excuse me, 629, PI number 62. And that appears to be an, another drawing of a tower? Yes. This item here at the top left, there's a circle and an X. Does that appear to be another one of the Slender Man symbols? Yes. When you were Reviewing the documents that you found in those lockers, did you find in any of the items that you recovered reference to hide and seek? Yes, I believe there was some writing in that notebook there. And possibly. that was a, a phrase that you saw and found in some of the creepy pasta related items that you found? I don't know what you mean by the creepy pasta. I just saw it written in there. Okay, and it was written in there with um, some of the other drawings that you found with the Slender Man symbol and the Slender Man figures that you found? Yes. During a part of your investigation into this, um, this case, did you at any point go online to check the Creepypasta Wiki website yourself? No. Detective, as a part of your investigation into this case, did you have an occasion to talk to Peyton's mom? Yes. And did you ever talk to Peyton's mom about anything that Morgan may have done in the house when she was there for a visit? I don't recall that. Okay, do you recall any sleepover where something unusual happened with um, Morgan inside the home? Inside Peyton's home? Or inside Morgan's home, even one of the homes. From Peyton's mother? Is that what you're asking? Yep, that's correct. I don't recall. Okay. Is there any reference to anything that happened in a, in a basement while Peyton and Morgan were together? The night of the sleepover for the birthday party, uh, they were playing video games. Did anyone bring to your attention anything related to any fire at any point? I'm going to check this reading. I will, uh, it is leading, but I'm recognizing the context of the examination and that question, so I'll overrule the objection. But I will uh, caution all attorneys to, on direct exam, to follow the proper procedure. As a part of your investigation, did you become aware of anything related to maybe a fire that occurred in the basement? Uh, not an actual fire. Uh, Peyton had said that uh, Morgan was playing uh, a video game 
that ha it's uh, Sims, a Sims video game. And so Sims are characters that you can control and you build like uh, an environment for them. And Peyton had commented that Morgan was playing this game with her Sims characters and said that she was going to starve the Sims characters and then set their house on fire. I don't have any further questions, Judge. All right, thank you. A cross-examination. Good morning, Detective Fisher. Good morning. Where did you interview Peyton? At Waukesha Memorial Hospital. What day was that, do you remember? I believe it was the 6th. Yeah. I believe it was the 6th of June. 6th of June, 2014? I believe so. So roughly six or seven days after the stabbing occurred? Yes. Right? Peyton was still in the hospital? Yes. She had some pretty significant injuries? Yes. Um, where in the hospital did you interview her? In her uh, hospital room. Okay. Where was she when you interviewed her? Uh, she was sitting in a wheelchair. Did you observe any injuries on her when you interviewed her? Yes, she had some, uh, she was wearing a t-shirt and some leggings and so her arms were exposed so she did have some uh, heel wounds on her arms. Why did you go to the hospital and inter interview her there rather than waiting until she um, would be discharged to interview her somewhere else? Well, we didn't know exactly when she was going to be released due to her injuries and um, we were aware that there was a lot of uh, media attention regarding the case and uh, the family was uh, fearful about going out in public and people seeing her and um, she was anxious about what happened that we kind of wanted to limit it that media and other people weren't trying to find her and um, just kind of give her a little extra protection. And you recorded the interview with her, right? Yes. She told you all about what led up to that stabbing, right? Yes. She told you how it was Anissa that suggested they play hide and seek? Yes. Morgan was the counter? Yes. Anissa took her deeper into the woods to hide? Yes. When Morgan came to where they were located, Morgan sat on uh, Peyton's legs, right? Yes. And you told us that Peyton told you, Morgan leaned forward and whispered to her, I'm so sorry. Yes. Peyton told you that Anissa just stood there watching. Yes. Peyton told you that Morgan said she had to do it. Yes. Morgan told Peyton it was the only way to save Peyton's life. Yes. Peyton told you at that point that she, Peyton, could have died. Yes. Peyton recognized that. Yes. Morgan never told Peyton that I have to stab you 19 times so Slenderman doesn't kill me or my family, did she? Correct. In fact, what Morgan told Peyton was that one of the creepy pasta characters was stalking Peyton. Yes. And Morgan even said, we're not joking to Peyton, right? Yes. Morgan had been scaring Peyton before this, right? Yes. With these creepy pasta characters? Yes. Telling Peyton that one of them was going to come through her bedroom window while she slept and kill her? Yes. They scared Peyton, right? Yes. And because she was so scared by this, she went to her mom, right? Yes. Correct. And her mom helped her out 
checked out this whole thing and went back to Peyton and said, look, I can't find any evidence of any truth to any of this. I think you're okay. I think you can ignore it. Something along those lines? Yes. Peyton still wasn't sure though, right? Right. Because of the way Morgan had been scaring her, right? Yes. Peyton told you after she had been stabbed, um, I'm pretty sure they wanted me to stop moving around and talking so people wouldn't find me. Yes. Peyton was able to recognize the fact that Morgan and Anissa were taking off, leaving her there to die, right? Yes. Peyton told you she couldn't see, right? Yes. She couldn't breathe. <laughs> yes. She was able to walk out of the woods, but then collapsed on the grass, right? Yes. She couldn't move at that point. Yeah, she said it hurt too much. From where Peyton was, well, you're aware of where Peyton was found, right? In the grass near the road. How far is that from Morgan's house? Boy, a couple blocks maybe. And from Anissa's house? Probably about the same. Peyton told you that in around January or February of 2014 is when Morgan really started to become obsessed with this creepy pasta stuff, right? Yeah, that's when she said she started to get interested in the creepy pasta. And that's when she started to send Peyton weird things through email. Yes. Peyton was considering somewhat not being friends with Morgan anymore, right? Yes. And at least uh, you spoke a little bit about Peyton's relationship with Anissa. You remember that? Yes. Peyton told you that Anissa is very rude, right? Yes. She hits people. Yes. She says bad words. Yes. And she blames it on being tired or hungry, right? Yes. Now, the morning that this happened, before they're at the playground or in the woods, they're back at Morgan's house. And Peyton told you some things about that, right? Yes. She told you that they were doing quizzes, right? Yes. And in the course of doing quizzes, one of the things Anissa, um, I guess, was quizzing Peyton on was, what if someone came up to you and stab and started to try and stab you? Yes. Right? Peyton told you about this? Yes. Peyton even told you that I thought it was really ironic that a half hour later I'm being stabbed? Yes. Even at the time at Morgan's house when Peyton was being asked about what would you do if someone tried to stab you, she thought it was pretty strange, right? Yes. Peyton told you that Anissa acted a lot different when Morgan wasn't there, right? Yes. And that she thought some of the bad behavior she observed by Anissa was simply Anissa's attempt to get Morgan's attention, right? Yes. Peyton told you that. Yes, she felt she uh, was doing it to impress Morgan. Peyton told you about some other things that were kind of strange to her that morning before they left for the park, right? Yes. Like Morgan was packing a bag to go to the park. Yes. That seemed strange to Peyton. Yes, it did. Why would you pack a bag? We're just going a few blocks away to play, right? Correct.
Um, you testified about uh, what happened inside of this bathroom at the playground, right? Yes. And how uh, at one point Morgan grabbed Caton's arms and held them behind her? Yes. And when Morgan was doing that, Anissa was standing in front of Peyton? Yes. And Peyton told you she heard Morgan say, we agreed you were going to do this, right? Yes. Peyton wasn't stabbed then, though, was she? Correct. And then later on, shortly thereafter, I guess, um, they kind of flip-flop, and Anissa's holding Peyton's arms, right? Yes. And Morgan's standing in front of Peyton. Yes. She's not stabbed then either, is she? Correct. And this is all in the bathroom, right? Yes. After that, Peyton leaves the bathroom, leaves Morgan and Anissa inside, right? Yes. You told us that um, Peyton recognized that Anissa was into creepy pasta, but not as much as Morgan. Yes. Peyton never told you anything that about Anissa being obsessed, right? <clears throat> Correct. And Anissa was never sending Peyton any scary emails or anything like that? Correct. Do you have any of those exhibits in front of you still? Or? No. You remember Mr. Smith showing you these all of these exhibits, right? Yes. <coughs> so you exhibit H again. You recognize that as a notebook you found in Morgan's locker at school? Yes. Show you. One of these pages again. Remember being shown um, this page? Yes. You can see that in front of you? Yes. Those are defenses against slenders, apparently, right? Yes. Can you look at that real closely for me, Detective Fisher, and tell me where on there it indicates that a defense against Slender Man is to brutally stab Peyton 19 times in the woods? I don't see that on here. Say anything on there about having to kill Peyton as a defense against Slender Man? No. In any of those exhibits that Mr. Smith showed you, say anything in any of those about killing Papey? No. I don't have anything else, Judge. Thank you. All right, thank you. Redirect. Let's have, let's have one more, that's probably one more question. I just want to show you that document that you just saw on the screen there. Okay, it says defenses, right? Yes. Okay, so what it seems to be referring to is when we see Slender Man, when we see Abbott, when we see Ben drown, when we see Jeff the killer, when we see Maskey and Hoodie, 
these are things we do when we see these real live characters. Isn't that what that is? I don't know about the real live part, but yes, it, this is what you should do when you see or what you should offer to these characters. Okay. So when we get to Slender Mansion, when we get to that forest, this is what we do to protect ourselves. Yes, some of it is for protecting yourself, and then there's other things of what you should do with these characters, like let's play hide and seek. Okay. There's no documents that you found that talks about how we become proxies, right? Yes. So, I'll just leave it there, Judge. All right, thank you. Uh, any recross? No, thank you. All right, thank you. Then, the, 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 um, then Detective Fisher, is she under a subpoena? She is, but she can do it. Any objections? No. All right, then, then, then Detective, you're released. Have a good day. Thank you. This I, would be a good time to take a break. Yes. So we'll take about a uh, 15 minute break. At this time. <coughs> All right, thank you. Please be seated. We'll be back on the record in State versus Boyer, same appearances. Uh, Attorney McMahon, do you have a witness to call? I do, sir. And that would be Mr. Thomas Haynes. And sir, step up, stay standing. Raise your right hand, clerk will swear you are. He's ready to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. I do. Okay. All right, then be seated. Uh, then pull up to the microphone and step bar with the red light at the head of Okay. Uh, state your full name and spell your last name. Sure, full name is Thomas Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S. All right, thank you. Mr. Haynes, what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. And where do you teach? Uh, school District of Waukesha. And at some point in time, were you the teacher for Anissa Wire? Yes, for fourth and fifth grade. And the young lady I'm pointing to over here with the long hair, is that Ms. Wire? Yes. And so you were her fourth and fifth grade teacher? Correct. Do you recall what subjects you taught her? Uh, she was in my homeroom, um, but primarily I taught math, writing, science, and social studies. Okay. So the majority of her classes were with you? Correct. And that was for a two-year period of time? Yes. During that time period, were you aware of any um, difficult circumstances that happened in Anissa's home? I was aware, aware of that her parents were going through a divorce. And did she have an issue with that? Um, she was upset by it. Okay. And did the school take any action to assist her? Uh, she was part of a group of kids whose parents were also going through a divorce um, so with our school counselor. Okay, so the school counselor had a support group? Yes. And that was specifically for children whose parents were divorcing? Correct. And Ani participated in it? Yes. During the time that you worked with her in fourth and fifth grade, was she doing, how was she doing in school? Uh, she was a great student, uh, respectful, she was doing well academically. Okay. Did she have any areas where she struggled? Um, socially, maybe making friends. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, I think there was times where she would be upset that not the, a lot of the other kids weren't including her and stuff at sometimes. Okay. Um, she wanted to be friends with some. and. Sometimes fourth and fifth grade girls aren't the nicest. Okay. Did you ever have occasion to talk to her about that? Yeah, we talked quite a bit. 
as I do with a lot of my students. Okay. With Anissa, were there any particular times when you spoke with her that you can recall? Um, I think a lot of the private conversations um, might have happened during lunch or recess time where we could talk privately. Okay, so other children would be off having lunch or recess together and she'd stay back with you? Correct. And was she ever tearful about the situation? Yeah, there was times where she was crying, where she was upset. Okay. And as a teacher, you tried to help her through it? Yep. And... Um, an area maybe she could have improved on is organization, um, being on time for things, um, at times focus. Okay. But like I said, she was uh, academically good. Okay. So sometimes she had problems with focus, but she was able to do her work at a good level. Correct. And did she appear to be trying very hard? She put good effort into her schoolwork, yes. Okay. And when you said organization, can you give me an example of what the issue might be there? Um, I'm trying to think maybe just, you know, disorganized desk uh, where she kept her supplies, her cubby. Um, I can't think of anything else specifically. So disorganized desk maybe had trouble finding things? Yes. Because of the lack of organization? Correct. Okay. But again, you had a very good relationship with her, correct? I think so. And she turned to you for help? Yes. And she was placed in a group to help her through her parents' divorce? Correct. Thank you. Nothing further. Okay. And thank you. Cross-examination? No questions, Judge. All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Is uh, Mr. Haynes under subpoena? He yes. is, and we can release him from the subpoena. Thank Any you, Any objections? No. All right, you're released, sir. Have a good thank day. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Mm. The next witness would be Krista Crowder. Stay standing, uh, raise your right hand, and a little higher, and our clerk will swear you in. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you that. I do. All right, then be seated. Thank you. Then state your full name and spell your last name. My name is Krista Crowder, K-R-A-U-T-E-R. -E and Ms. Crowder, where do you work? I work at Horning Middle School in Waukesha. And what is your job? I am a middle school flight academy advisor at Horning. And what is flight academy? It is a multi-age program for students in grades six through eight where they work in an interdisciplinary approach. We um, combine science, social studies, reading and writing and math and interdisciplinary projects that the <coughs> students work on and choose. And when you say an interdisciplinary approach, what does that mean? That means that instead of the traditional setting where students go to one math class, one social studies class, one science class um, throughout the day, they have seven different periods. We try to combine those subjects together into project-based units. And in years past, in 2013 and 14, um, was Anissa Weyer one of your students? Yes, she was. And do you recognize the young lady sitting over there as Ms. Weyer? Yes, I do. And what grade was she in when she was in Flight Academy? She was in sixth grade. And as part of Flight Academy, um, she received um, some technology to use, correct? Correct. All Flight Academy students are issued, I believe, in, it's an iPad or? At that time, it was just the Flight Academy students in, at Horning that had iPads. Now all of our students in the district have iPads. Okay. And they used those to work on their various projects? Correct. And the, the district had a policy that they weren't supposed to be using it for other things, correct? Yes. Is it fair to say that sometimes students strayed from that policy? Um, I would imagine they, that there is a possibility of that. Okay. How did Anissa like the program? 
Um, this was three years ago. Um, I, from what I remember, she was an advocate for our program. She enjoyed the interdisciplinary approach and having more choice as to how she was learning and how she was showing what she was learning. Um, I, I think that she enjoyed coming to school every day. Okay. And you said that she was uh, an advocate for your program. She served as a tour guide, correct? Correct. And what does that mean? We have anywhere, we have hundreds of visitors come and see us every year from across the country and world. Um, and we often ask our students to take one of the adults on a tour of our spaces and talk to them about how they learn and what they're learning. And Anissa was one of those tour guides. Okay. And how did she get along, to the best of your recollection, with the teachers? Just fine. And how was she as a student? Um, she was a great student. She was a leader with other students. She finished her work when we asked her to. She um, enjoyed learning. She worked on projects. She was a great student. And when you gave her rules, she followed them? Correct. <coughs> and did Anissa get along with the peers in her class? Yes. Was she ever upset with the other children? Um, that's hard for me to remember. Um, we work with middle school students, so there are, you know, there are issues every day <laughs> that they have. Um, I don't remember anything out of the ordinary that happened with Anissa. Do you remember if Anissa was thrilled when other students didn't follow the rules? I, I, from what I remember, she wanted everybody to follow the rules, so we had, you know, a nice day together, everybody got along. That's what she expected from the other students. And she would express that to other students, correct? Mm-hmm. And there came a time when you actually had to sit down some of the other students and talk to them about being nicer to Anissa. I don't remember that. Do you remember talking with Detective Casey? Yes. Years ago? And if his report indicates that you had to talk to some of the girls? If I said that three years ago, it probably happened, yes. Do you recall her as someone who had a lot of close friends? She did have some close friends, yes. Do you recall who they were? Mm-hmm. You could use initials. Um, she was good friends with um, somebody with the initials of I-S and G-D. Okay. And were those children in the Flight Academy? Yes. And you wouldn't have seen her really with children outside of Flight Academy? No. So her co-defendant, for example, Morgan Geyser, you wouldn't have had opportunity to observe them together? No. Did her parents ever join you on any of the field trips that the group took? Not that I remember, no. Do you recall what interests she seemed to have? I, I think that she enjoyed reading and writing um, the humanities approach with social studies intermixed. And Ms. Crowder, is there anything that would refresh your recollection as to what you told Detective Casey when you spoke with him three years ago? Probably reading what I said. Would you like to take a look at his report and see sure. if it refreshes your recollection? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. 
does that refresh your recollection of that conversation with the students no of the conversation with detective Casey with detective Casey yes okay mm -hmm. so were there particular interests three years ago that you remember that Anissa had yes now I after reading this statements that I made the pangolin I remember her talking a lot about endangered animals it was the first time I had ever heard of that animal and it was from Anissa and she did a project on the pangolin and I remember learning a lot from her okay what's the pangolin it's a combination it's a couple different animals um, I don't remember anymore she did a great job explaining it at the time and um, I just remember that I enjoy learning from my students and that was one example where she really taught me a little bit about that animal okay and you also indicated to detective Casey that Anissa was someone you saw as not having very many friends she didn't have a lot of friends no but she had some close friends like I just said okay and you also told Detective Casey that you had to sit down with some of the girls and mm -hmm. back them off when you said. She needs to write down a word. Yes or no. I'm, I'm yes, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and as you said, these were middle school children. So right. despite the fact that these <coughs> were children have been chosen <coughs> to be in Flight Academy, they're not chosen. They go through a lottery process like our STEM Academy follows as well. Okay. So the children in, in Flight Academy who come in through the lottery process, they're just like every other middle schooler. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes or a no? Yes, I'm sorry. It's hard to get I'm sorry. <laughs> but so you recall she had some close friends, but not a lot of friends. Yes. Some of the children weren't fond of her because sounds like because she was a stickler for the rules. Is that fair? I would say that's fair. Okay. Yes. And uh, she was really devoted to endangered animals. Yeah. Endangered animals. Yes. You wouldn't have seen her with Morgan Geyser. No. Or Peyton. No. Nothing further. Thank you. Cross examination. Ms. Crowder, do you have any recollection as to the date that this stabbing occurred? The date? Right. I know it was the end of May. Okay. If I told you it was May 31st, 2014, would you have any issue with that? No. And do you recall if the stabbing actually occurred on a Saturday? I do remember that, yes, because we weren't in school at the time. I'm sorry, you weren't in school at the time? Right. Okay. Uh -huh. But the day before would have been a Friday and you would have been in school? Yes. On May 30th, 2014? Yes. Is there anything about Anissa's behavior on May 30th of 2014 that would have led you to believe she was delusional? No. Nothing out of the ordinary? Nothing. That you recall on that day? No. Do you remember telling Detective Casey that it was your opinion that Anissa had to, uh, you believed Anissa knew the difference between fantasy and reality? Yes. You told Detective Casey that? Mm-hmm. Sure, yes. yes, I'm sorry. And you believed that to be the case? Yes. <clears throat> Nothing else, thank you. Any redirect? Ms. Crowder, you believe she understood the difference between fantasy and reality? Yes. You never talked about creepy pasta with her, did you? No. Or Slender Man? No. Or Jeff the Killer? No. Or anything of that nature? No. You talked about the things that were going on in the classroom? Correct. Thank you. Nothing further. Any further cross? No. The ma'am is your first thing with a K or a C. Okay. All right. Thank you. With that, uh, you are released.
you're on a subpoena, the subpoena may be released as well, true? Yes. Yes. If she's also under state subpoena, I believe, Your Honor. Does the state wish her to remain under subpoena? No, thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank, thank you for you. being here. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you back. I do. Then be seated, pull up to the microphone, and state your full name and spell your last name. Michelle Trisoni. It's T as in Tom, R U S S O N I. All right, thank you. <clears throat> detective, how are you employed? I am a detective with the City of Waukesha Police Department. And how long have you been a detective with the Police Department? Uh, three years. Okay. And how long have you been with the police department? Uh, 17 years now. And were you employed as a detective on May 31st, 2014? Yes, I was. And you were assigned to do, were you assigned to do an interview of Anissa? <coughs> yes, I was. And did you record your interview of her in its entirety? Yes, I did. I'm going to show you some videos um, and I want to first start off by showing a clip that I've indicated as clip one. It starts at, off at the zero um, mark and it ends at about four minutes and 44. <coughs>
And I, I just wanted to show you that so that um, you can see it and let me know if you recognize that as the start of the interview of Anissa. Yes, I recognize that. Okay, and that's Anissa in, it's in that corner in that chair. Yes, it is. Okay. Your interview with her lasted an entire three hours, right? I believe it's about three hours. Okay, and I'm not going to show the entire thing, but there's like three hours of recorded um, interviews of her approximately on that date, correct? Right, it wasn't continuous, but the, the time frame of the video is, is three hours. Okay, so. and I think at the beginning of your question of Anissa, so when you, you, when you came in there, was she crying? She looked upset. Okay, and I think you may have mentioned that you recognized that she was upset? Correct. There were, were there also periods later on in your questioning of her that she again became upset and possibly began to cry? Yes. And during your questioning of Anissa, for the most part, <clears throat> it was just you and her alone in the room, is that correct? Yes, I think, I think there were some evidence technicians that came in at one point to do some work, but for the most part it was the two of you. Right, it was just us, yes. During your questioning of Anissa, did she begin to talk to you about creepypasta? Yes, she did. And did she talk to you about how she became aware of creepypasta? Yes. I'm going to show you an, another or, a clip. <laughs> Um, I first heard about it on YouTube. I was watching a Minecraft mod showcase by Sky. Uh, Sky is Minecraft or something. Okay. And it said it, he, it was the creepy pasta mod. So I was like, hey, what's the creepy pasta? I watched the whole video and I was like, oh, that's interesting. A few months later, I asked my friend Kelly, the one who I got the skull bracelet from. Okay. I asked her um, what, who that Jack or Jeff or Killer was from the Creamy Pasta, and then she told me about I Love Jack and Laughing Jack. Laughing Jack is supposed to be um, like a clown that also targets children, and then um, I Love Jack, he wears a blue fawn mask, no mouth. Of two big black holes for eyes that are like oozing this weird black ooze. And then um, supposedly he eats human kidneys. Wow. And it's for the record, Judge, oh, that is the 23 point, uh, 23 minutes, 17 seconds to 27 minutes and 43 seconds mark. All right, very Pardon. good. Let me just verify that, Judge. I may have um, given you the wrong clip. I'm sorry, I misspoke. That is the 56 minute 34 second mark to the 57 minute 47 second mark. And what we just saw there was, um, I believe, niece, Anissa explaining to you what creepypasta was. Yes. And prior to meeting with Anissa, did you know anything about creepypasta? I did not. Doing your interview with her, did she share with you finding evidence on the wiki that Jeff the Killer and Slender Man were real? Yes, she did. And Judge, I'm going to play the, a clip from the 28 minute five second mark to the 29 minute 24 second mark. So it's clip three. And so he, she said, well, we have to kill Bella to prove ourselves to the Slender? Yes. 
And what did you think of the when she was talking? I was surprised, but like also kind of excited because I wanted proof that he existed because there were a bunch of skeptics out there saying that he didn't exist. And then there's a bunch of photos online and sources online saying that they did see him. Okay. So a lot of people believe that, this, that Slender actually exists. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of talk about this on the internet. I bet, right? Yeah. Okay. And so you, so you at first thought? At first, at first I was kind of surprised and didn't want to do it, but later I didn't want to leave Morgan all by herself out here because who knows how many creeps are out here. So I decided to go along, take along, plus I let it be kind of like proof skeptics wrong. Okay. So did you think that you actually had to kill somebody to do it? Yeah. Like for real? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so she's talking about her finding evidence of Slenderman, Jeff the Killer, on the internet. Yes. And she's talking about, you know, finding it on Wiki. Right. She talks about also going with Morgan because she's afraid of Morgan going along and encountering this creature. Isn't that correct? Yes. I, it sounds like at first she didn't want to, but then she didn't want Morgan to go by herself. Okay. And she says something about encountering that creature. Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what term she used, but... And did she talk to you about proxies? Yes, she did. Did she talk to you about her and Morgan wanting to become proxies? Yes. And did she talk to you about becoming proxies and proving Slender Man was real? Yes, she did. Okay, and I'm going to play clip two, Judge. And that's from the 23 minute, 17 second mark to the 27 minute, 40 minute. Can we, can we start from the beginning so you guys, this is a birthday party, right? Or, okay, can you tell me what happened? Um, well, the first thing that happened was I was at the party and I saw Yes. 
And amongst these puppets, there are also killers? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so proxies or puppets and killers are not the same? Yes. Okay. Like on a, um, like a triangle chart, Slender would be up here. Okay. Then would be like killers and then proxies. Okay, so killers outrank the proxies. Yeah. And then there's another of three classes that's supposed to be really powerful. Uh, it's like Zalgo or something. It's supposedly a demon with seven. So what she's doing there is she's going over with you her understanding of what um, Slenderman is, what killers are, what proxies are. Right? right, everything that she's learned. And she even tells you at one point, you can go on to the internet, go online, you mm -hmm. can find evidence of this yourself. Too. What she's been looking at, right. Okay. And she tells you she knows all this because that's what the internet told her. Correct. During your questioning of um, Anissa, did you ask her how they were going to do it, how they were going to become proxies? Yes. And did she tell you that you know, she was the one who was supposed to stab Peyton? Well, it was, it was kind of a long, convoluted uh, process to how it was going to happen. It was Morgan's idea that she wanted to, that they needed to kill Bella and that's how they were going to become proxies. Okay. And, so. she, and she did tell you that um, she was the one who was supposed to do the, the stabbing? Yes, yes. And she did tell you, too, that she was not able to do so? It's, yes, it seemed to go back and forth when she was able to and when she wasn't able to and, and continued to hand the knife back and forth. Right. And, and she told you that happened about two times. At one time, it happened in a in the bathroom? Right, it happened in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And did she tell you that that also happened, the handing the knife back and forth happened in the woods as well? Yes, yes it did. And did she tell you that she herself was not able to do it either one of those times? That's correct. And did she tell you that she was the one who did tell Morgan to do it? Yes, she did tell me that. I'm going to play clip 13, Judge. That's the two minute, 39 second, but 39, two hour, 39 minutes, 14 seconds into the video. And then. You had said something before about saying go ballistic? Yeah. What was that? So. Um, like, I meant go ballistic, go crazy, make sure she's down. And that's when you do start walking away. Mm -hmm. And then after I got like five, ten on the way, I said now. And then William said, the, don't be afraid, I'm only a little kitty cat. Go ballistic, go crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's her telling you that she did say to Morgan, do this. Yes. Okay, she didn't appear to try to hide her involvement in this, right? No, not at all. And I think there was a point when she was describing what happened, what she saw, and she began to cry. Is that true? Um, I don't understand. And the, when she, she was, was describing what she saw, when she saw the stabbing, she began to cry herself. Right? When she was explaining that to me? Yes. Uh, I believe there was a time, yes. She began to cry. Um, she then said that, did she tell you that after the stabbing that they had to, to go somewhere? Yes. And where did she say they needed to go? Well, she needed to go to, they, in, once they did the stabbing, they needed to um, go to the Nicolay National Forest, which is where Slender Man's mansion was located. And did she describe them having a map? Uh, she said that... I believe she said that Morgan had memorized the map okay. to get there so, in her head. Okay, so she didn't describe actually physically having map. It was in Morgan's mind. Yes, as I recall. Did she tell you that she had to walk like, possibly 
for two days and 18 hours, she thought, to get there, or over two days? Uh, I don't remember her saying a specific time frame. She just explained that the, the mansion was in, I think she called it Leola or Leona, uh, which I'm aware is in the northern part of the state. So whether or not she told me a time frame, I don't recall, but I just know that it's a, quite a distance. Okay, and she did describe it as having to walk a yeah. long, long way. Yes, that they were gonna be walking, yes. Okay. And that's to get to the Slender Mansion. Correct. And that's cool. And I'm gonna play clip five, Judge. Why do you have to go far away? What was this discussion about? Supposedly, Morgan found out that um, Thunder lives in the middle of... Thunder has this big mansion that all the creepy pastas supposedly live in. Mm -hmm. And it's supposedly in the middle of Nicolette National Park or Forest or whatever. Okay. Up in Lodo, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So we were going to walk the whole way there. I realize it's really, really far. And did Anissa tell you anything about, you know, after they left, stopping at a Walmart? Yes. Did she tell you that they each became to a point where they had nervous breakdowns as they were walking? Yes, towards the end of their walk, which was well past the Walmart and, and, and whatnot, but she uh, said that they both had somewhat of a, of a nervous breakdown. Did she talk to you about, as they were walking to Slender Mansion, asking Slender Man's help as they were walking to his mansion? Yes, I, I recall, I believe Morgan had called out and asked for Slender Man's help. Okay, I'm going to play clip nine. Yeah, whenever I'm really bored, I go on my iPad and I look up, go to the Creepypasta Wiki app, mm -hmm. and then there's um, a button you can click for a random pasta, mm -hmm. and I read whichever random one comes up. And, and so in reading these, you truly believe that slender exists, that there's slender out there in Not your anymore, because... Um, we like asked for his help when Morgan and I were having nervous breakdowns and he didn't do anything. Nothing happened. Before this today, leading up to and even no, after while, you while we were walking and having a nervous breakdown while I was laying on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan said, Slender, if you're listening, please help us. And he says having a nervous breakdown and um, then she started kind of crying. But you truly believe before before, yeah, before you I believed, but now I know that it's just teenagers who really like scaring people and making them believe false things. So she says in this that clip that um, as they were walking, they were they were calling out for Slender Man. Yes, Morgan did. Yes. Okay. And she also says that before the stabbing, she really believed that Slender Man was real. Yes. Um, after they were leaving, after they left Walmart and they were walking, um, I think they walked for a couple hours, um, did she tell you that they ran out of water? Yes. Okay, and did she tell you that they stopped at Steinhoffos to refill their water bottles? Yes, I believe they filled up both at Walmart and at Steinhoffos. Okay, so the two water bottles that they took to carry all the way to um, Slender Man's Mansion and Nicolet National Forest, they were completely out of water before they even left Waukesha. Right, yes. Um, did Anissa tell you that she really believed that Slender Man existed? Well, in the clip that you just played, that's what she explains. Okay. And did she tell you that at another point as well? Uh, she said that there were skeptics out there, and she wanted oh, to get that um, okay. I'm going to play clip four, Judge. I'm the Creepypasta Wiki, but he is um, actually a real person, Jeffrey Woods. He supposedly murdered his whole family somewhere in there. Um, um, and um, we're just like, okay, so we know at least Jeff is real. 
Okay. And then Jeff is called what online? Jeff the killer. And supposedly he um, he went insane, so he burned off his eyelids and it took a bunch of knife and cut a big smile on his face. And his his supposedly long black hair about down to here and um, ice blue eyes. That's what Bullocky said also. And he killed a bunch of people? Mm-hmm. Including his own family. That's what the news reports said anyway. Okay. So he's considered a slender? No, he's considered a killer. He's considered a killer. Okay. Hence just the killer. Yeah. Okay. And he's known to exist. News reports say that he exists. If you go on Google Images and search Jeffrey Woods news article, a bunch of news articles will come up and then there'll be a picture of, excuse me, a 17 year old boy with, um, who kind of looks like me, but has, but it was a black and white picture. Mm-hmm. And he, has kind of the same hair as me also. Okay. Did you cut your hair to make it look like you? No. No. It was just, just coincidence. Okay. And so you guys knew that Jeff the killer, an actual killer in this triangle, exists. So you thought it would be exciting to find out, hey, if we can prove, if we can be a proxy and prove and do this, kill, kill Bella, then we know that Slender exists. If we saw him, actually, we, we think we see him sometimes. Okay. Like when we were walking up to where to where we were going, um, we saw him, like, I saw him out of the corner of my eye on this side. Okay. And then Morgan said she, her like, twig cracked when no one was moving. So today, after everything happened with Bella, when you guys were walking, you thought you saw Slender mm-hmm. as you were walking? This was after Morgan had stabbed her. Okay. So you thought that possibly you would see a Slender? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so in that clip, in the timestamp is 29 minutes, 24 seconds to 32 minutes and 33 seconds, what she's telling you is that based upon her ability to confirm the existence of some creepy pasta characters through the internet, she believed that Slender Man was real. Yes. And she also explains to you that she found newspaper articles that verified the real life existence of some of the characters. Yes, that's what she And one of the ones that she was telling you that she was able to find confirmation of was Jeff the killer. Right. Right. And she said that she found all this stuff on the wiki. Mm -hmm. She went on the internet and she found Mm -hmm. newspaper newspaper reports. Yes. Um, She said you'd go and just do a Google images search. What you'll find is newspaper articles, images of Jeff the killer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And She also told you that she has herself seen Slender Man, right? She said that she saw blips, I believe, um, glimpses of him twice. And after, even after the stabbing, she said that she saw Slender Man as she was walking towards Slender Mansion. That's the first time that she told me she saw him. Okay. And and you actually indicated also that there were um, times where she told you that she saw Slender Man prior to the stabbing? Yes. And she said that she had, did she say she personally saw him about two times as she was riding on the school bus? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to play clip number 10. Morgan said, we have to kill Bella today. And I was like, but can't we stay another night and do it tonight? Because I was still kind of scared and kind of hopeful. Scared and kind of hopeful? What do you mean? Like, I was scared because A, I would never see my family again. Mm-hmm. 
And um, B, I was kind of hopeful to prove that I wasn't crazy, that I wasn't, that I wasn't seeing things. Because even I saw Slender a few times. Mm -hmm. so I think I was just, that was probably my mind playing tricks on me. When did you, when was this before the party that you saw yeah. Slender? You've seen him before? Twice. Um, once, well, they were both on a bus. We ride the same bus to and from school. So we were, uh, like, talking on the bus. I look out the window, and I see this uh, supposed thing standing like this with tendrils. Looks exactly like a tree. Um, they were gone like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I told Morgan, and so I actually thought that he was real, because I saw him. So there's a few things that she said there. She said that on the bus riding school that she saw Slender Man two times, correct? Yes. And she also said that one of the things that was going to be hard for her was to when she left to go to Slender Mansion, she was not going to ever see her family again, right? Correct. And I believe she told you as well that Morgan has seen Slender Man previously as well. That was... I don't recall. I know she said that she heard a twig snap from the wind, but I don't recall okay. if Morgan had said that she has seen it. Okay. Oh, that's well. 11. December or January, um, Morgan, who also was into creepy pasta, did you introduce her to, to it, or did she already know about it? Um, she said that she's seen Slender also in like old pictures that she has. Okay. So I told her about them, and then she said, "Oh my God, I think I, see, I think I, I saw Slender when I was like five, because she." Supposedly, used to live in like a really heavily wooded area. Okay. And um, Slender likes to stay in woods. wooded areas. Okay. So in December and January, uh, Morgan approaches you and says, um, she tells you um, that you should be proxies of Slender or puppets. And she, you say, okay, well, how do we do that? And she says, well, we have to kill Bella or Peyton. Mm -hmm. right? And this will prove ourselves to the Slender. And prove ourselves worthy. Prove yourselves worthy to Slender. Mm -hmm. And what would that do for you? Is that to get Slender to like you? Or well, feel important? Technically, if you're a proxy, you have to live in, um, supposedly you live in Slender Mansion. Oh. And you take orders directly from him. So it'd be, that'd be neat to you? You would enjoy that? Or you think that'd be kind of cool for at the time? It was, it was, at the time it was really cool, but okay. I, again, I wanted to prove all skeptics wrong. Okay. So in that clip she says that um, when she and Morgan are talking about the, the Slender, Morgan reveals that when she was younger and lived near the woods, she saw Slender Man as early as that? Yes. Okay, and she, she says that's something Morgan told her that's basically proof that Slender Man is real. Yes. Um, she, she also... And let me, I want to back up a little bit. Um, the, the recording that we're seeing right now, that was your interview, your meeting with Anissa when she was 12 years old, correct? Yeah, yes, that's correct. And that correct. was the same day that the stabbing occurred? Yes. Okay. Now, at some point, did Anissa tell you that Morgan made some sort of deal with Slenderman? Yes, she did. And did she tell you that um, Morgan said that if they did not follow through with the deal that um, Slender Man will kill their families? Yes. And did Anissa tell you that um, she had to do it because of that danger that her family was in? 
Well, this that statement that Morgan had said to pay, or excuse me, that Morgan had said to uh, Anissa was made after the stabbing. That that uh, she had made the deal with Slenderman that if Peyton wasn't killed, that that Slenderman would hurt their family. So that was after the stabbing. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'll play clip seven for you. When Morgan said to you that if, if we don't do this for Slender, um, our families are and loved ones are going to be killed, do you honestly say that? Well, yeah, because he could be anywhere from 6 feet to 14 feet tall. He's, like I said, a tall guy who constantly wears a suit with a red tie. Um, he doesn't have a face. His skin is white. And um, at his own will, he can, um, like, exploit these tendrils from his back and, uh, like, strangle his victims and promote the creepypasta. When he said he targets children most, okay. so I was really scared knowing that Slender could easily kill my whole family in three seconds. Okay, so she's talking about characteristics of Slenderman. Right? Correct. Yes. And she talks about his ability to appear out of thin air. Right. And she talks about her belief that that's how quickly he can move. Right. Uh, and she talks about her belief that her family would be in danger if that did not occur, the stabbing. Right? Yes, since, since Morgan had made that deal. Yes. Um, Again, this is your questioning of Anissa, just parts of it, and I want to acknowledge this is not the entire interview that you conducted with her, right? Right, right. The entire thing, again, it lasted like three hours. Right. Okay. And throughout your interview with Anissa that day, she continued to maintain that before that stabbing, she believed that Jeff the Killer, Slenderman were real, right? She believed that Jeff the Killer was real and she wanted to prove the skeptics wrong that Slenderman was real. Okay, and so. after the stabbing, mm -hmm. she said that she and Morgan were on their way to Slender Mansion Correct. where they were going to meet up with Slenderman. Correct. I just have a few other questions. They're not related to the, the interview you did of Anissa, but I believe you engaged in some other investigation as a part of um, your role in this offense, correct? Yes. And I think one of the things that you did were you, you talked to Peyton's mother, correct? Yes, I did. And I believe that you talked to Peyton's mother about um, Morgan. Yes, I did. Correct. And I, did Paige's mother provide you with some information about her concern about, about Morgan? She did. And what did she say uh, about Morgan? Um, boy, specifically, I don't recall. I, the one story I remember her saying is, um, uh, I think that Morgan had been over to their house maybe just a, a brief couple of times. And um, one time in particular, uh, she had uh, been in the basement of um, Peyton's house and lit something on fire. Okay. And that was concerning to, to her mother. Okay, might it have been the carpet? I don't remember specifically. I think I, it had something to do with a candle, I believe. But I, I don't recall specifically. Did she say anything about concern about her daughter in the relationship that her daughter had with Morgan? she Yeah, she did have some concerns. Um, 
I believe that uh, Morgan had started a rumor a while back about uh, Peyton, and I think throughout that whole incident, I don't think she was real happy the, with their friendship, but um, Peyton wanted to keep it going and, and forgave Morgan, essentially. Okay, because her mother was so concerned at one point that she wanted to try to put an end to that relationship. I believe so, yes. I don't have any other questions. All right, thank you. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. You, in this particular case, sorry about that. You were the first police officer in the city of, well, strike that. You took a long interview with the defendant in this case, correct? Yes, I did. If the video says it's three hours and 20 minutes. It's roughly three hours and 20 minutes. That's how long the video ran, yes. I know there's a few minutes apparently at the beginning where Anissa is sitting in a room all by herself. That yes. was while you were doing other things? Yes, I think I was grabbing her some water. And at some point you said there may have been a moment or two where another officer entered the room. At some point you took some evidence from her fingernail scrapings and such, correct? Right, Specialist Plata is our evidence unit um, uh, specialist, and he came in and collected DNA from her and her clothing. But in terms of specific questions about the incident, you, um, you didn't, um, he didn't ask, I'm sorry, he didn't ask any questions of Anissa while he was in the room other than things related to things she needed to do to give him the evidence he needed. Right. I stepped out of the room, but I've, I've watched the video. He didn't ask her, as far as I can recall, anything particular in reference to the case, just explaining to her the DNA collection. And at, at some time later in the interview, um, she said she's cold and she's brought a couple of blankets, correct? Yes, that's correct. In fact, throughout the interview, it seems to me you were doing your best to make sure she was as comfortable given the circumstances as possible. Is that a fair statement? Yes. All right. Now, Mr. Smith, just a moment ago, played you clip seven where Anissa is talking about how Slenderman could hurt her or her family, correct? Yes. In terms of the chronology of this interview, though, isn't it true that that was said relating to what Slenderman could do to her, but not what she knew prior to the incident? And what I mean by that, and I'm, I'm going to firm up that question because I don't think it's a very good one. Um, she told you she didn't know about this deal Morgan had made with Slenderman until after the incident. That's correct. So when you're asking her this question or the question comes up about whether Slenderman can hurt her, it's just in the context of Slenderman in general, correct? That's correct. It's not in terms of the context of at the time you did this, you did do it because Slenderman could hurt you or your family. Right. In fact, it was very clear, was it not, that Anissa did not know about the deal Morgan made until after the incident? Right, she didn't know about the deal that Morgan had made with Slenderman until they were well into their walk almost to the interstate, is, is my understanding of where they were when she had her nervous breakdown. And, and she reiterated that on at least a couple of occasions during your interview, correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. I'm going to show you a clip that begins at 22.38 and runs for approximately 15 seconds. Whoops. All right, what am I doing wrong with the audio cable? Oh, turn up on your computer. Thank you. Let's try that now. Is that a yes? I really think it's 
office was I didn't know I was in danger until after the Morgan Dowdy came from Bella. And people call her. They call her Bella. So basically that clip went from 2238 to 2300, correct? Yes. Or 23 minutes, actually, down the dot. Yes. Now, I know it's somewhat hard to hear that clip, so did I ask you to listen to that closely? You did. In fact, did you listen to it over and over at my request? And I did. Probably to the point where you were sick of me. <laughs> and is it your belief that what she says there is, the silly thing about this was I didn't, and then she says something inaudible, no, I was in danger until after inaudible Morgan stabbed Peyton or Bella, as we call her. Yes, that's right. So in that clip, she's verifying to you that she didn't know anything about this deal or that she was in danger from Slenderman until well after the stabbing had already taken place. That's correct. And in fact, that comes up again a second time. And on that occasion, you are now talking once again to her about, as I understand, the walk to Steinhoffels, or the walk that ends up near Steinhoffels, correct? Okay. And at that point, does she tell you something about um, Morgan now telling her about this deal? Yes. What does she say, roughly? Uh, she said that uh, she kind of stopped walking. She, she said that she had a nervous breakdown, and as she's telling me that she started crying, and she said that, um, Morgan, I believe that she she wanted to go back. I don't recall if this is when she said she wanted to go back home, but she says essentially that um, Morgan tells her, well, you, you didn't know this, but um, I made a deal with Slender Man that if Bella uh, wouldn't have been killed, then um, Slender Man would go ahead and kill our families and, and possibly us. And, and she specifically says that in the context of that she didn't know it until that moment. Correct. That Morgan says to her, you didn't know this, but. Right, yes. Yeah, that's correct. All right. This clip begins at 4524. So we were walking and then I had a total nervous breakdown and blamed Morgan for everything. I said, you stabbed her. You wanted to do this. Look at what Morgan did. And Morgan was not one to cry very often. Mm -hmm. And then finally she just let go and started crying. And then I just needed to vent because I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was scared. And I was scared A for myself and B for my family because um, after we left Peyton in the woods um, close to the marshy area that was nearby, she said, Oh, and there was one thing I forgot to tell you. I kind of sort of made a deal with Slender saying that if I didn't saying that if we didn't kill uh, Bella, that he would, he would either would or could kill our families and everything we love. And I don't want that to happen, so that's why I did this. All right, so that ends at 46.43. Is that the conversation you were talking about yes, just a moment yes. ago? Yes. And she specifically says, I didn't tell you this before. Right. Yes. <clears throat> Now, at some point, did you have a conversation with Anissa about her belief in Slenderman and whether she still believed in Slenderman? Yes, I did. And did she, in fact, specifically tell you, in response to a question, does it worry you you won't see Slender, or do you think he does not exist? Response, he does not exist. Did that happen? Yes. And then you said, okay, and she said, he is a work of fiction, and I believe that people who say they have seen him in person, um, have, um, 
red creepy pasta, and then recall memories of strange trees instead of slender. Because I know there was one of the cases on the bus, I looked back at the tree and it was strange. Is yes. that a correct response? Correct, yes. So by that point, probably three quarters of the way through the interview, she's already disavowing a belief in Slender Man, correct? Yes, she had, I think she had even said it a couple of times um, throughout our, our interview that she now recognizes that he is not real. And at some point, I know there was a conversation about how Morgan, when she was told to go berserk and slab, stab Peyton, said something about being a kitty cat, correct? Morgan said that, yes. And you asked Anissa about that, correct? Yes, it, well, Anissa had explained to me during the, during the events of, of just prior to Peyton being stabbed that that is what Morgan had said to Peyton. In fact, what she said to you when you asked her about that was, she said she was going to draw cat whiskers on her face when she became a proxy, and that would be her catchphrase, mm -hmm. like with Jeff the Killer, is that a yes. fair statement? Yes. So it wasn't that. she was saying that she's a nice little kitty cat. It was going to be her creepy pasta, Slender Man catchphrase. Yes. And I, in your conversations with Anissa, did it appear to you that what she was really saying to you when she tried to, when she had that nervous breakdown on the walk was that Morgan was afraid she would leave her on the walk to Nicolay alone and she couldn't do it? I'm sorry, can you, can you ask me that again? Sure. Morgan at some point was concerned that Anissa wanted to go back home, correct? Yes, she was. And she okay. basically tried to coerce Anissa into not doing so. Yeah, I believe that uh, Anissa had said at one point in time on the walk that, you know, I'm done, I don't want to walk anymore, I, I want to go home, I want to see my, you know, my family. and. Um, Morgan had said, if we do this now, um, I believe she made a reference to being um, arrested and executed. Um, so and being held responsible. And at that point then, uh, Anissa acquiesced and continued walking, correct? Yes, that's correct. Officer, I'm showing you what's been marked exhibit number three. Do you recognize that? Yes, it's my statement that I wrote um, from Anissa. And basically what happens here is after some lengthy period of time conversing with Anissa, you take what she said to you and you boil it down to what you think are the important points and put it in what turns out to be a six-page statement. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. It's a synopsis. And at the end of that, you read that statement back to Anissa, correct? Yes, I did. And in that statement, there's nothing to the effect of Anissa saying, before we did this, we did it because Morgan said if we didn't, Slender Man would kill us or our family. There's nothing in there like that, is there? No, there's nothing in her statement saying that. And yet, you did read that to her, correct? I read the statement to her when I was done writing it, yes. And you asked her if she had any changes or corrections she wanted to make to it, correct? That's correct. And she had two changes or corrections she wanted to make to it. She wanted to clarify something about the proxies and what they were and added something about Zalgo or something to that name to that effect, Zalgo, Z-A-L-G-O. Yes. But, and she also wanted you to put down that at Steinhoffel's they had gotten some fruit snacks. Is that also correct? That's correct. But at no point did you say, oh, and by the way, you really should put in there that the reason I did this is because I thought if I didn't, Slender Man would kill me or my family. She never said that, to, make, to add that to the statement, did she? She did not. And it's not in there, is it? It is not. I have no further questions. Thank you. Redirect. Thank you. When you were talking to Anissa in that room, she told you over and over again that she believed that Jeff the Killer was real. Yes, she did. And Jeff the Killer, did you do research on Jeff the Killer? I did a little research on, on Creepypasta itself and Slender Man just to try to grasp an idea of what she was trying to explain to me. Did you find a real life Jeff the Killer? 
I found the articles, I guess, that she was talking about. There are images out there, but the, the ones that I found appeared to be drawn. But okay. I did find Jeff the Killer online. And you saw articles, newspaper clippings of Jeff the Killer? One, one article I can recall, for, yes. Okay. Jeff the Killer is a fictional character, then? I believe he is, yes. She said she believed she, Jeff the Killer was real. That's correct. And one of the things that she said to you during that interview is that she had been seeing Slender Man and she wanted to do this so that she can prove that she wasn't crazy because she was seeing Slender Man. She did say that at one time. She said to you that she believed he may not be real because as they were walking to Slender Mansion, he didn't come there to help them. Right, when Morgan called out for him. Before that, she believed Slender Man was real. She wanted to prove the skeptics wrong. I don't know if she really believed that he was real. She, knew, she believed that Jeff the Killer was real, and so then she got her hopes up that Slender Man would be real. So I don't know if that she really truly believed that Slender Man was real because she continuously told me that she wanted to prove the skeptics wrong. Okay, but she told you that she saw Slender Man as she was riding the bus. She, she did. She said that she, saw, she thought she saw glimpses of him. Okay, and she told you that she saw evidence online on the internet that creepy pasta characters were real. She saw both. Right, and she told you that her close friend Morgan saw Slender Man when she was five years old. Yes, that's what she said, yes. Okay. And she was exchanging that evidence with Morgan before this stabbing occurred. Yes, they were, yes. Slender Man was, they were both exchanging information on Slender Man together. Okay. Is that what you were asking? Right. Okay, yes. And over the time period that they both were introduced to Sleepy Creepypasta, mm -hmm. the two of them were going back and forth, as far as you're aware, exchanging their evidence that creepy pasta characters were real. Yes, they were exchanging the different, sounds like they were talking, to, talking with each other about creepy pasta and Slender Man. In that written statement, lastly, that you wrote down, that's something that you wrote in your own handwriting? That's correct. Okay, that's not something that Anissa wrote down herself? Right. Okay. Just lastly, when she was um, referring to you or talking to you about Morgan and that relationship, she described her relationship with Morgan as close, right? Yes, I believe she said they felt like she, they were sisters. Okay. No, no other questions. Thank you. Any, any recross? Just a couple of things. I want to make sure I have the progression correct. At the beginning of the interview, she's present, professing a belief in Slender Man. Yes. Somewhere near the middle, when he doesn't come when they ask him for help, she's skeptical that he exists. Right. And then by the end, she gives that answer that we talked about before, that she doesn't believe he exists. She knows, she knows that he doesn't exist, yes. Did you find her responses and your conversations with her similar to, say, a 10-year-old who skeptical about Santa Claus but hopes that he still exists? Yes, I would, I would say that's fair. You were asked about whether the statement was in your handwriting, and you said that it was. Mm -hmm. yes. But you went over it word for word with Anissa, correct? Correct. And then as I, as I write the statement, um, I ask her a question again. I write her answer down. Make sure that's how she wants it, because these are her words. So that's how I take the statement. In fact, there's a couple of places where you scratched out a word and you had Anissa initial that that change had been made, correct? Right. Outside of the changes that she wanted added in, um, I, I was made grammatical errors, made sure that she was aware that I made the grammatical errors. She saw it and then initialed next to it. And then because they're scratched out, so it doesn't look like I went ahead and changed the statement afterwards. And then when it's all done on the bottom of each page, you have her sign that it's correct and it's what she wanted to have you say. Correct. Yep.
Nothing further. Any redirect? Just a few other questions. This um, state's exhibit number three. This was wasn't prepared thirty minutes into the interview, right? What? So your question is when I when did I write it? You didn't write it down thirty minutes into the interview. No. You didn't write this down even an hour into the interview. No, I didn't. You didn't write it down an hour and a half into the interview. I don't recall specifically when I began writing it, but once I received her whole, all the information and, and kind of got an idea of what happened, then I began writing the statement. So that would have been towards the end of the three hour interview? Yes, that's correct. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Any further cross? No, sir, thank you. All right, and is uh, Detective Trussoni under subpoena? Yes. yes. She released? Yes. State uh, any objection? No objection at all. All right, then thank you, Detective. Have a good like day. I'll okay. take that back. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being here. It's a work of fiction. I cited all this stuff. What is the uh, your schedule for witnesses, uh, Attorney Smith? We um, have one of our one of the doctors on um, subpoena for one thirty. Would the court be willing to recess until then? Yes, so you, there's nobody else here right now. Not at this moment. We also have Detective Carpenter coming at the same time. All right, but Detective Carpenter's not here. Carpenter, not here. All right, all right. Well, we will then uh, recess to to one thirty. The uh, lunch plans will be similar to those yesterday, so we'll be in recess to that time.